In this tutorial, I'll go through all of the options available to you for making your lithophane light box. So first you go to lithophanemaker.com, you click on the lithophane light box. On the right side you have what is present in all of my tools. You have a design schematic and you have a picture of your current design. On the left you have a bunch of settings that you can pick between. On the right you have other settings you can pick between. To begin with, you upload your pictures and I'll just go ahead and select some pictures. Okay, so the first parameter on the left side is the lithophane resolution. To describe what the lithophane resolution value means, I have opened an STL file of a lithophane light box and I have zoomed in very close into the surface of the lithophane and made it so that we can see all the triangles that define an STL. Then I've also measured the distance between the vertices of the triangles, so the length of one of these triangles legs right here and I got the value of 0.2 millimeters. That is the lithophane resolution. If you want to make it so that your lithophane has a higher resolution, more data points on the lithophane surface, then you need to make that number smaller. And doing so will increase the size of your STL file. So if you were to have the lithophane resolution value, you will quadruple the size of your STL file which could cause problems for you with your slicer depending on how strong your computer is, how much RAM it has, how much CPU it has. You can think about this length in terms of the accuracy of your 3D printer. If you think that your 3D printer can be accurate to 0.1 millimeters then it might be worth having 0.1 millimeters if your computer can handle it. On the other hand people might not even notice the distance of 0.1 millimeters I like to stick around 0.2. I haven't seen much advantage from going lower than 0.2 and you can get a very crisp and clean lithophane if you print with 0.2. If you print over 0.3 it might start getting a little bit worse but probably not even in ways that you can notice unless you also print the same lithophane at 0.2 and compare them together. If you get over 0.4 then you'll be able to tell that it's of lower quality than the original picture. Next we have the depth, the width, and the height. And these are the exterior dimensions of the light box. You can see them defined here. So by changing these you will change the image under your design. So say that I change the depth to 200. You can see that the design now shows a depth of 200. I can do the same thing with these other dimensions as well. It's still short, so now I change the height to 200 also, and the whole thing becomes a cube again. So the maximum thickness of your lithophane controls how dark the picture that you get is, and the minimum thickness controls how bright it is, and all the other points are just values between the maximum and minimum thickness based upon the grayscale of the image after I have turned your image into a black and white picture. So you don't have to convert your image to a black and white picture. My software does that for you. But once it is a black and white picture, it'll have all these values for how light or dark it is. And those values will determine the thickness at each point on your lithophane. So the correct values to use here depend upon what kind of filament you're using because different filaments have different opacities. So if you have a filament that has a lot of coloring in it, then you will not need to have as thick of a lithophane. But if you have a filament that is fairly transparent, then you'll need to have a thicker lithophane. Um, the minimum thickness should not be smaller than your nozzle's diameter generally, because typically with most people, they've tuned their printer to work with a line width that is their nozzle's diameter or perhaps a little bit larger than the nozzle's diameter. So if you make this minimum thickness smaller than whatever your line width is in your slicer settings then you'll end up with holes in your lithophane and obviously that's not what you want. Over here you have the frame dimension and it just controls the distance between the back of a lithophane and the frontmost part of the light box right here. So it's the distance from here to there. So for example, if I were to make this 20, 
you can see that the distance from here to here is now 20, the distance from here to here in that direction is 20, and it, it looks kind of silly, so I'm going to go back to 10. Now the overhang angle is the overhang angle that you will have in this print when you print it, oriented in the obvious orientation. So you probably want to put this at whatever you're comfortable printing without having to have supports. So I use 60. So the easiest way to explain the bulb diameter is to show you a picture of me measuring the bulb diameter and it's just the diameter that I can fit my calipers in here because basically that ledge is going to be a lot like those calipers getting in there and I measure that to be about 36 millimeters. Next you have the light bulb length and you can see it's the distance between the electrode at the end of the light bulb and the topmost part of the light bulb. And when you measure this and you put it into lithophanemaker.com, lithophanemaker will automatically position this ledge right here so that that light bulb is right at the center of your light box. So see if I were to increase the length of this light bulb, it would scoot the ledge to the left so that the light bulb that you're putting in there will still be at the center of your light box. So now this light bulb, which is longer, is now at the center of your light box still. Um, and then the next dimension is the socket outer diameter. So here's the light socket I was using. I just measured the outer diameter of it. And I added a little bit of a tolerance on it because I printed it at that and I, it was hard for me to fit it in. So I had to print again and I just added some tolerance to make sure that sort of error didn't happen again. The top lithophane Z-shift moves the top lithophane up and down so that the top lithophane doesn't poke through the frame and out the other side, which can happen when you're designing your lithophane light box. The clearance between the top lithophane and the box gives you some tolerance to error in your printer. If you put a value of zero right here, then it would make it so that your printer would have to print perfectly. You'd have a perfectly airtight snug fit and that's just unrealistic so if you make this value 0.5 it it's, makes it so that the top lithophane is a little bit smaller than the place where it fits into the box so that you can push the top lithophane in comfortably and it still be fairly snug but be able to pull it out without breaking anything with it being manageable so the correct value to put here depends on the tolerance of your machine. Now you should know everything you need to go make an awesome lithophane light box. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. You can also find me on Facebook, Thingiverse, Twitter, and Instagram. Go make something awesome!